obviously, we all know that um, in today's world, very few jobs are safe. Uh, we do hear political leaders say that they're going to bring the jobs back and all of that. But I think we all realize that a lot of our jobs are going to be moving into automation and uh, thus we need to start rethinking how we uh, learn and educate. Um, not only is manufacturing suffering greatly uh, and probably they will be the first um, uh, victim, but of course also IT um, and other knowledge-based uh, workers will, will be suffering as well. The technolo technological advancements are so rapid, um, so how do we prepare for the future? We need to keep learning throughout our lives uh, to stay relevant in our work experience journey. Uh, this task uh, cannot be expected to be done by the employers. We are all accountable for our own futures and successes. Soft skills are already recognized as essential moving forward and it is of course what elevates us in this room from automization and robots. We should focus on problem solving, communication, creativity, emotional intelligence, which is, is something that I feel very passionate about, strategy and innovation. FAA currently works with several banks, not only in Malaysia where uh, our office is based, but also throughout the Middle East. Uh, where we see that they focus on uh, internal effective talent management systems that are built around lifelong learning. And of, obviously, the first step to making that possible is that you need the top management's buy-in. Because obviously, when the banks are doing these kind of structures, it is extremely costly. Um, but these banks have proven uh, that by having clear standards and guidelines around their required competencies, their future of the human capital is better prepared in today's uncertain climate. And thus, they will remain relevant and have a better chance of survival in the business. The learning should, of course, also be assessed through the standardization of guidelines that are internationally benchmarked. So I will be brief and say that we all have to be proactive about upskilling ourselves and the people that we work with. Recognize the lifelong learners around you and in your organizations because they will help you to lead the way. Flexible training schedules are important in today's world, and what Alistair was touching on is it should be fun, and obviously also catering for adult learning. Hold individuals and yourselves accountable for their own learning journeys. Uh, and I think what goes hand in hand with that is a fundamental support system where you have coaching and mentoring as an integral part of your human capital development. Consider different modes of learning uh, because not everything suits everyone. Uh, and make sure that the learning outcome is measurable because we all know that, yes, of course it is important to do the passive learning as well, but for the banks, and um, the institutes that are represented here today, I think we all need to make sure that we can prove what the ROI is. So measuring um, the outcome is crucial. Um, and what the, the coaching and mentoring is something that I've learned recently also. We need to make sure that we take that into a very serious regard, especially for the younger generation that do require uh, an ongoing support uh, mechanism. When we think about uh, LLL, that is lifelong learning, in the context of the 
banking industry. There is a Lexus. Why do we need lifelong learning, as Proverbs said? There's dynamism in knowledge-based economy like ours, and there's a constant change at lightning speed in technology, in policies of government, in market demography, in globalization. The world is a small village. We either learn or we perish. And there's a need to maintain relevance. And therefore, lifelong learning within the banking sector should be seen as a strategic instrument for organizational growth and for profitability. And so for me, we look at the way forward. How do we carry this conversation forward? Within the context of the individual, there must be a paradigm shift, a positive attitude and growth mindset. And individual bankers, I dare say the institutionalized banking sector should also be encouraged to think outside the box. And then we must change the idea of learning. It's no longer rigid. There's flexibility in learning. It's all around us and there are resources. We must establish measurable and achievable goals. And we must plan towards that. We must identify and utilize resources and opportunities. At the institutional level, Lifelong learning must be recognized as a conscious and continuous strategy for excellence. There must be motivation, encourage individuals, provide incentives, and there must be domestication of competency frameworks for banking industries developed by relevant supervisory agencies there must be the domestication of whatever competency framework for banking industries have been developed. And there must be adoption of a lifelong learning progress report for individual staff to document progress, whether it be institutionalized learning or self-directed learning. And the place of mentoring, mentoring, mentoring cannot be overemphasized. Those who have been there who know the way, can guide. And learning through mentors, whether by reverse mentoring or direct mentoring, is important. Finally, there's feedback mechanism. The CIBN, the other banking regulatory bodies, must put in place the feedback mechanism. The previous uh, session talked about data. You must be able to collect data. How far have we gone? How well are we doing? What needs to be done? And what have we left undone that we have not done? And what have we done well?